Hey guys, welcome back to Everlasting Summer, day one. Bright daylight struck my eyes. At first, I didn't pay attention as I wasn't fully awake yet. On their own, my legs toward, carried me towards the door. Damn, it looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. But there was no door. I looked around the bus and realized that it wasn't as... It wasn't a good old worn out lie as instead the bus was an Icarus model, a new one. I froze in shock. How? What? Am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? No, I must be dead. I patted myself down feverishly. I slapped myself painfully in the face a few times, banging my forehead on the back of one of the bus seats. It's clear either I'm still alive or you can still feel pain when you're dead. But how could this happen? Maybe I slept for too long and ended up at the bus depot. And then what? Did they put me on another bus? I rushed. Oops, I just skipped it. Sorry. Granary, wherever I looked. Tall grass on the roadside. Trees. Flowers. Summer. But how? It was winter just a moment ago. My head was aching unbearably. As if it was going to explode. Slowly I began to remember. A long road running off into the distance. Forests, plains, fields, lakes, and forests again. I think I was sleeping, but then how could I remember all of it? And then, a gap. Some girl leaning over me. She softly whispered something into my ear. Then a gap again. And then I woke up here. Who was that strange girl, or was she just a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better and calmed me down a little. I felt warmth all over, coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Then I need to find her, and the best place to look for her is away from here. I rushed to the left, then to the right, then stopped, hesitating over where to go. Finally, I ran in the direction from which the bus had probably came. Whew. Physical exercise does refresh one's mind. Thoughts became clearer, and it gets a little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however, I was sitting on the roadside wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by golfing breaths of hot air. In any case, the run did its job. The fear withdrew for a while. Maybe I really am just dreaming. Though recalling myself harm on the bus, I immediately rejected the idea. I am neither dreaming nor dead. An arrow road ran through the field and far into the distance, the exact same road from my dream. I must be very far away from home. And not just that, it was winter yesterday and now it's summer. It's the whole environment. Of course, summer is usually like this, green and hot. But here everything is not entirely lifelike. Everything looks like it was taken from the paintings of a Russian landscape artist of the 19th century. The grass is just too lush. The bushes are not like what bushes should be. They are so thick that you can't see anything through them. Like treetops, honestly. And then the trees themselves. The forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they had closed their rank ranks and were now just waiting for the order to advance onto the fields and plains. I caught my breath and looked at the bus, which is now barely visible. That was a good run. Fear overtook me once again. Those power lines. There must be people here. What does it mean? In fact, that means nothing at all. Couldn't they have power lines even in hell? Roasting sinners over hot coals that's so last century. I must have reached a point of no return, after which you should either lose your mind completely or finally try to understand what is going on. And while I still have a choice, I should pick the second option. Slowly headed back to the bus. Of course it was scary, but I'm not likely to find an answer in the fields or the woods. In this wretched bucket of bowls is the only kind of link that I have with the real world. I should I should carefully scout the area. A brick wall and a gate in its gates crowned with a Soviet sign. Statues of pioneers stand on either side. A road sign nearby showing the bus route number four ten. You guys haven't noticed this is what we're seeing in his dreams. The trip's taking a bit too long today. I smirked. 
a person might start acting inappropriately in extreme situations. Something like that is probably going to happen to me now. This place didn't look abandoned at all. No rest on gates, no damage to the walls. Sylvie Nook. What could have a name like that? Judging by the pioneer statues, it could be a kid's summer camp. Moreover, it appears to be open. Of course, the simplest explanation, knowledge speaking, explains nothing at all. That strange girl, the altered bus, summer, the pioneer camp. Thousands of theories went through my head constantly. Through my mind instantly, my bad. From alien abduction to lethargic sleep, from a hallucination to a time and space shift. None was worse than the other, but there was really no way to pick a single one. Then it occurred to me, I can try to make a phone call. I took out my cell phone and dialed the first number from my contact list. No signal, obviously. But instead of a signal strength virus, the screen was showing a thick cross. Huh? Alright, there may be no signal in such a remote place, though I cannot be the only one who came here. Buses don't drive themselves. You got a good point, dude. I examined the bus from all sides to make sure that it wasn't hallucination. Bits of dirt in the bottom, some rust here and there, faded paint, and worn out tires. Now, this is definitely a very ordinary curse. Yeah, exactly the kind of bus which takes you to places beyond your understanding if you carelessly fall asleep. I get a nervous chuckle. It came out by itself sporadically because this wasn't the right place or time to laugh. But where on earth is the driver? I cautiously sat down on the curb beside the bus and started to wait. My patience didn't last long. My anxiety seemed to have reached its peak and I started to slightly go mad. In such a situation, anyone would probably have felt something similar. Aliens and parallel universes were gone from my imagination, leaving only a void and darkness. Is this how everything will end? How my life will end? But I just wanted to do so much. There were so many things I had no time for yet. I was, over, I was overwhelmed by the idea that this was definitely the end. But why? It was not fair. Surely I am no worse than anybody else. Oh God, why? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm kind of making, I'm kind of messing up some words here and there, but whatever. Tears were running my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started to roll, started rolling in the grass. Why? What did I do? Why me? But my cries were only heard by the speechless statues of the pioneers and a bird on the tree, which immediately flapped its wings and took off crying out something in its own bird language. As if laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt it after dinner nap. I, w I left breathless from weeping and just lay quietly, sobbing occasionally. After a while, I managed to pull myself together. My mind cleared up a bit as if terror and the fear of death gave me a little break. All in mind, I someone, if someone wanted to kill me, what is this all for? It doesn't look like an experiment either. If this is just some crazy coincidence, then there's probably no threat. Anyway, for now, it seems there's no danger. The panic was soon gone. Of course, the blood was still pounding from in my temples and my hands were still shaking, but at least I could think clearly now. Right now, there's nothing I can really change anyway, so no matter how much I think or how mad I get, I would only make things worse. Until some actual facts appear, there's really no point in making guesses. In any case, I won't learn anything by lounging, around, lounging about here. The camp, if of course it is really a camp, Looked like the only place where people could be, so I decided to go there, and hardly had I reached the gates when a girl came out from behind them, wearing a pioneer uniform. My logic didn't let me down this time. Then again, a pioneer uniform in the 21st century, and then again, a girl here. I froze, unable to take a step. I felt much like, I felt very much like running away, running as far as I could from this place, far from this bus gate statues, far from this bloody bird with its sista. Just running free like the wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets, passing by, winking at the galaxies, running, becoming a pulsar ray, and turning to a vestigial radiation, running to the face the unknown. Running no matter where, as long as it's far away from this place. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled. I could not help but notice her beauty, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts worked independent of consciousness, and while only 5% of the brain is responsible for cognitive processes, the remaining 95% are always busy sustaining life and in particular ensuring stable functioning of the hormonal system. I desperately wanted to get less complicated and stop thinking in formal quotes from the encyclopedia, though my thoughts appeared one by one, being stupid, out of place, as if taken from an internal monologue of the hero of some junky software crime fiction book. A pretty slavic face, long braids that looked two armfuls of fresh hay and blue eyes you could drown in. 
Alright, you must have just arrived. Okay, what does the guide say if I should answer her? Reply. Okay. Um, yeah. Alright then, welcome. She smiled broadly. Strange as it looked, as if I had just had a normal girl. Ah, uh, I'm messing this up. Strange it looked as if I had just a normal girl in front of me. But I shouldn't have returned here. The woods and fields seemed better. But shall I should. Uh, but what shall I do next? Try to speak with her as if she was a human or run away or what? The blood was pumping unbearably in the head, in my head, tearing it apart from the inside a little bit more. And the poor pioneer girl would be splattered with the gruesome cuts of my skull. That's kind of nasty, man. <laughs> okay, what's so funny about that? The girl looked me over. It sent shivers down my spine and my knees started to tremble. Dude, she's just a girl. You're not a shy 12 year old. Come on now. N nothing. Great then. Great what? What's so great about that? Suddenly I thought rest of my mind. The hell with it. Forget about the bus behind me. The fact that it was winter yesterday and summer today. I wanted to rip off my itchy sweater and just accept all this is actually happening. Everything it does. It should be all for the best. Would you happen to know? You should go to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look, you go straight ahead to the square and then turn left. You'll see several small cabins. She pointed at the gates as if I knew what was behind them. Well, you can ask them where all Olga Dmitrievina's cabin is. Dmitrievina is a patronomic aide. The revision of a person's father's name, in this case, Dmitrievlov, a revision after that person's first name, and sign of respect or a formal address. Whew. Um, got it? Of course I didn't. Well, I got to go now. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared through the gates. It seemed as if to her I was something ordinary. And all this show with the bus and travels awake or to sleep were troubling only to me while I think here is just getting, it's just the way it's supposed to be. Camp leader, pioneer uniform, what are they doing? A historical reenactment here? I hope I won't find Lena standing on top of an armored car in the square. <laughs> but even that wouldn't surprise me right now. After staying alone for a while, I went, I hid into the camp. Well, it's about time, dude. You should have done long ago. Okay, at mere 50 meters ahead, a small one-story house popped up on the left side. The sign near the door said clubs. I was about to come closer. When the door suddenly opened, a short girl in a pioneer uniform, pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty face gave me the impression of one suffering for the fate of the whole of mankind with a truly universal sorrow. As soon as she saw me, the girl froze as if frightened. I froze too, considering what was the best to do. To approach first or wait until she showed me some initiative. Or maybe run away after all. Although this was, although this last option was constantly being suggested only by my self-preservation instinct, at least what, that's what I like to believe. Not the worst human instinct, but far from the most logical. If this instinct played poke against deductive abilities, the outcome would be predetermined. And those dedu deductive abilities, or at least their semblance, were hinting to me that there was no need to be afraid of this girl. Suddenly someone jumped out of the nearby bushes. A girl wearing a bright red t-shirt with USSR written on it, even though it says CCCP, but okay. Such a perfect reproduction of the age. She looked quite short from the distance and was probably younger than both pioneer girls. They wanted to gaze in this girl at the door of the clubs. Good, the redhead girl is the one we're going for the good ending for, so take note of her. At least uh, I decided to come closer, but the USSR, as I called in her mind, jumped towards the first girl and started telling her something. While why are league waving arms? Okay, before I go on, you guys might want to question why I'm actually going after her. Because um, I've already gotten the both the good and bad ending to the um, blonde girl we just met. I've already got the good and bad ending for the main character we're playing as. I've got the um a. Uh, um, the blonde girl, I mean, not the blonde girl, the blue hair girl that you guys saw in the intro. Um, I already got her ending. She doesn't have a good or bad. She just has her own ending. And then the girl with the purplish hair you see right here, I haven't got her endings yet, but I don't really care much for her character, so I'm going for her good ending and then calling it quits on this game. Okay. The other girl in the turn seemed confused and lowered her gaze, remaining silent. I would have probably continued to observe her amusing dialogue, but the USSR suddenly pulled out something out of her pockets and started waving it in front of the first girl's face. This is something that turned out to be a grasshopper. Hopper. 
The first girl squealed. She must not be too keen on insects as she instantly rushed up towards the place where Lenin presumably made his speech about workers and peasants revolution. That is to say, towards the square. The USSR glanced at me, grinned playfully, and dashed after her. Not a, bla not a bad start to the day. I have absolutely no clue where I am besides that there are some kids here who are playing as pioneers. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my home. It might not. Uh, it might even be a different reality, and this is. This was indeed a reality. I mean, everything around me seemed this seems so real, if a little embellished, and that I was starting to think that in fact my previous life could have been just a dream. What am I supposed to do now? I was picking at the cracked paving stumps of my shoe and staring aimlessly at the club building. Just a few more seconds before I have to come up with some decision. And that's when I recall myself rolling on the grass weeping. I cringed in disgust. But perhaps it's another instinct when all energy for one friend and self-pity is used up. The entire body either goes into hibernation or mobilizes its reserves. Mine seemed to have chosen the second option. Because as the blue, I found determination to figure out what was going on. And in order to do that, I had to act like a man. Like a human to maintain the dignity of a representative of my own world. I followed the path to the left on the right side of which stood small cabins, apparently the homes of local pioneers. Actually, they looked quite cozy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I had never been part of its children, children's organizations, neither the pioneers nor the younger October children. I imagined the daily life of a typical pioneer camp a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks, wake up, call at 6 o'clock, play by a siren, one minute to make your bed and join the formation at the drill square. Man, that sounds like a, a basic training camp. Um, I don't know what that word is. I don't know. So, uh, I have no idea what that was. So, this just struck me on the back. I staggered but remained on my feet, turned around, and prepared to fight her heroically for my life. All I found was another girl standing before me. Yeah, I got the bad ending for her. I tried to go for the good ending, but I had win at some card game, and I didn't know how the card game works. So I got her bad ending, but hmm. my, mouth open, my mouth hung open in surprise. Pick up your jaw off the ground. I closed my mouth. The same pioneer uniform, but the way she was wearing it looked, let's say, provocative. Like all the girls I met before, she was, this one was rather cute, but her overly arrogant expression killed any desire to get her no get to know her better. New year, are you? Fine, see ya. She threw a threatening glance at me and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl. I got the hiccups. To turn at the corner. Who knows what else she might have been up to. The most interesting thing was even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. I did not give up off the flame of some deadly danger. Except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. At least, I, at least I managed to make it to the square. There was no linen on an armored car, although one could easily be, expect something like that after all this had happened. He said, however, a momentum to a certain comrade toward in the middle of the square. The letters on that pedestal read Ginda. Must be some big figure in the party. There were small benches at the sides. It's quite pleasant here. Where did that girl tell me to go? To the left or to the right? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And why am I going there anyway? Alright, I've decided to pretend to be normal. So, to the right. Through a small grove. I came out up here. I might have taken a wrong turn. Hey girl, I, mean, I, I just skipped it without reading it, sorry. I turned towards the voice. The first girl stood before me. Now what did I tell you? Take a look to the square, wasn't it? Hey girl, what's up? She had changed from her pioneer uniform into a bikini. Mm. Oh, I still haven't introduced myself. My name is Slavia. Now, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Slavia because I don't know how it's pronounced. Actually, my full name's Slavayana, but everyone calls me Slavia. So can so you can too. Uh, I mean, yeah, I felt a bit confused, so I could not come up with more meaningful answers. And what's your name? I feel like she could see me right through me. Um, I'm Semyon. Nice to meet you, Semyon. All right, I'm almost done here. Could you wait here for a minute? I'm going to change and we'll go to all good together. Agreed? Agreed. After this exchange, she ran off. I sat on the pier and let my feet hang into the water. I was wearing winter boots, but in such weather, there was nothing wrong getting my feet wet. Furthermore, let 
It let me cool myself a little. Looking at the river, I was brainstorming and processing everything that's happened. If there's some kind of conspiracy, it's a weird one, even too friendly at times. No, it look, really looks more like a random event. Some entirely incom incomprehensible and random event. Shall we go? Sylvia was standing beside me, just in the pioneer, pioneer uniform again. Let's go. I've been here for a very short time, but all of the people I met, she looks the least suspicious. However, this fact is already suspicious itself. We talked. We walked to the square. The USSR girl and the girl who hit me on the back were chasing each other. Is this some sort of game they're playing? Ilana, enough running. I'll tell them to Olga. Aye, aye, Captain. I decided not to question Slavia for a while about what was going on for the, or the local residents. Better meet with this mysterious Olga first. Sounds like she's the boss here. We walked past the rows of almost identical cabins, some of which looked like fat beer barrels, while others looked more like household sheds. Finally, Slavia stopped in front of the smallest one-story cabin. It looked like an artist's painting. The faded paint chipping here and there with age was sparkling in the sun. The window shutters slightly ajar were swaying almost unnoticeably in the wind, and the huge lilac bushes were growing at its sides. It seemed as if this ramshackle hut was drowning in a storm of purple silk and lilacs in some elemental force and were inexorably destroying the troops, troop leader's house. What are you standing around for? Let's go. Slavia snapped out of my daydreaming and stopped teasing Lena already. Oh, that's creepy. Rena? Sounds like there's someone inside. Indeed, a moment later, the door swung open and Yolanda ran out and dashed past the same mischief grin. The pigtail girl came out next. Don't let it bother you, Lena. So her name is Lena. Gotta be thankful it's not Rena, at least. But I don't. Instead of finishing her sentence, she blessed and quickly headed towards the square. For some reason, I felt like turning and following her with my eyes, but Slavia said, come. You pervert. Okay, well, anyways, we entered the cabin. Inside, it looked something similar to what I'd imagine. Two beds, a table, a couple of chairs, a simple carpet on the floor, a wardrobe, nothing special. But at the same time, it felt home-like, cozy, although this room was almost in the same state of disorder as my own flat. The girl standing near the window appeared to be about 25 years old. Nature had obviously gifted her with a pretty face and a good body. At least one thing could keep you happy in this pandemonium. The locals are beautiful. You're finally here. Excellent. My name is Olga. I'm the camp leader. Nice to meet you. I'm Simeon. I decided to talk as if I wasn't surprised by anything that was going on. She came closer. We've been expecting you since early morning. You've been expecting me? Yes, of course. And when does the next bus come? Because I... Uh, and why do you need it? Yeah, right. Why would I need it? Guess I shouldn't ask directions. The people here may react to them quite unlike how I prefer, and I doubt I get any answers. No reason, just curious. By the way, where are we exactly? Our mailing address, I mean. I wanted to send a letter to my parents at the time I got here. Fine. For some reason, I had the desperate idea that if I played along, something would, I would find something out. Oh, but your parents just called in half an hour ago. Sent their regards to you. Now that's a surprise. So can I call them? I, Cause I forgot to tell them something before I left. No. She gave me a sweet, spontaneous smile. Why not? We don't have a phone here. Then how can my parents make a call to here? I just came back from the district central town. I talked with them there. Oh, so that's how it is. And can I somehow get to the town? No. She kept the same smile. Why not? Because the next bus only comes in a week. I decided not to inquire how the troop leader managed to get there and back. I would n get no answer anyway. All this time, Slavia was staying next to me and seemed to find nothing odd in our conversation. Oh, I need to find a uniform for you. I've got absolutely no desire to put on a pioneer short or to wear a ridiculous red neckerchief. However, wearing winter clothes in summer isn't a great job, great idea either. Right, thank you. I wonder if I'm the only one here who finds it strange that someone's wearing a coat and winter boots in such heat. Righty, yo, I'll be off then. You can get yourself acquainted with the camp. Don't forget to come to the dinner in the evening. Having said that, she walked out of the cabin. No walked is the right word. She rushed out. I ain't up alone with Slavia. I must go too. Got things to do. Take a walk, look around the camp a bit. See you in the evening. If there is no threat or catch, this, this really is 
and bodies by Salavia becomes more and more appealing. For the first time that I realized it was awfully hot here, although obviously my winter clothes were to blame for that. I looked off my coat and jumped into my bed and I pulled over followed it. It was now I was now we're only wearing a t shirt. That's much better. All I could do now was follow their advice and go look around camp. I'll try to find something out in the meantime. Passing the local residential district, I saw a pioneer guy coming my way. I was really, and it was really a pioneer guy, not a pioneer girl. Apparently, there were men even in this kingdom of Amazons. Hello, you're new here. You must be Simeon, right? And how do you know? Everyone knows already. I'm Electronic, by the way, the real one. You can call me that. Electronic was a popular robot character appearing in a popular Soviet film and book series. He looked like an exotic copy of a school kid called Sergei Chuskov. Don't know who that is. Electronic, the real one. Things were going from crazy to completely insane. All right. Yolanda also calls me Cheesy. Cheesy? On toast with mushrooms? Because my last name is Cheesecoff. I see. Oh, okay. Let me show you around. I accepted his offer as it would take me much longer to get to know this place alone. Fine, let's go. We ended up at the square again. As if this place was all... As if this place all there is to the camp. Lena was sitting on one of the benches reading some books. Electronic confidently approached her. Hello, Lena. Meet the new guy, Simeon. He started briskly. Hello. We are going to say we have already met in a way. Yes. She looked away from the book for a moment, glanced at me, blushed, and went back to reading as if not, not noticing that we were still here. All right, let's go on. I was at first surprised that meeting this girl was reduced to a couple of words, but then I thought that was better that way. Electronics' vigorous activity did not fit well with Lena's shyness. Let's go. Next, we came to a building, which I instantly identified as a canteen. And this here, I know, this is where you consume organic food. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> On the canteen's porch stood that friendly girl who hit me in the back earlier. At the sight of my, at, ah, at the sight of her, my joking mood vanished in the blink of an eye. Really, now is not the best time to be pulling this guy's leg, even though he is quite hilarious. First, I need to figure out what is, what's what here, or at least where I am. Over here, ah. Oh. Her over there, that's Alicia Devokskaya. Be careful around her. He spoke something, something, something. Don't ever risk calling her Dev. She doesn't sell, whatever. She doesn't like that. What did you say? What did you call me? She must have heard him. And blink of an eye, Alicia jumped down from the porch and dashed towards us. Alright, you'll manage from here onwards. The trunk took to his heels. Okay, what does the guide say about this? Do nothing? Okay. Do nothing. Lisa running past stopped for a moment and growled. I'll deal with you later. Deal with me? What did I do wrong? I added a forced guilty smile to my words. But what am I guilty of? She made no reply and carried on chasing electronic. Looks like I'll have to kill time alone waiting for dinner. I decided to go east. At least in the direction where east would be in my world. Soon after, I found myself near a football pitch. A game was in full swing there. I guess watching it for a bit wouldn't do any harm. In my childhood and teen years, I was not a bad player myself and even thought of going professional, but a few injuries in a row killed my desire to risk my health for the sake of an uncertain chance in the game. Good that different angels were running around the pitch. I could see a boy of 10 and a girl of about 14 years old. A girl. Hey, that's Yolanda. Alright, so she plays football. What's so surprising? Oh, she's 14. Okay, not bad. I thought she was like 12 or something. She seems a restless one after all. I was standing quite far from the pitch, but she still noticed me. Hey, you. Yelena shouted. Wanna play? I didn't know how to answer. On the one hand, running around for 10 minutes is no big deal. On the other hand, any wrong move in that situation could be my final one. But in any case, my attire wasn't suitable for this weather. If I played in winter boots and warm jeans, I could sweat like a pig. And playing barefoot without jeans would be simply unethical. Maybe another time, alright? I shut in response, turned and walked back. I was followed by Yolanda's screams about my pants or about me being a pansy or something like that. <laughs> That's funny. Even Ian was falling, making me feel tired, empty after a day wasted with no real purpose. Now that is true, dude. You kind of wasted your day. I came back to the square, sat down on a bench, and gave an exhausted sigh. I'd, rather, I'd better sit here and wait for dinner. After all, it's easier to search for your answers when you're not hungry. That is true, dude. You can't do nothing when you're hungry. Okay, they do give food to people here, right? Well, they have to. You know, it's curious how the simplest human needs can break the will to ponder on things to strive for something. 
For example, I feel hungry now, so I care much less about where I am or what's happening to me. I feel you, dude. Okay. Could great people be also be affected by this? I don't know, dude. Maybe. In that case, how did Spartacus start the slave uprising in ancient times? Why are you bringing that up? Of all, whatever. I can only conclude that I am not a great person. It doesn't really matter which mechanism I serve as a gear in the society, the Matrix, or a weird pioneer camp. My thoughts were interrupted by the sounds of bells chiming from my loudspeaker on a light pole. It must be dinner call. It headed towards the canteen. It was a good thing now I knew where it was. Olga was there, standing on the porch. I stopped and looked closely as, at her as if I was expecting something. She looked at, back at me for a while, but at last came closer. Simeon, what are you waiting for? Come in already. Guess nothing bad can happen if I go with her. My stomach backed me up here. The two of us went inside. The canteen looked like a canteen. I had a chance to visit a factory canteen at some point in my life. This one is likely the same, just maybe a bit cleaner and more modern. Metal chairs and tables glazed tiles on the walls on a floor, unsophisticated tableware with the original ca crack. Yes, that's what a canteen in a pioneer camp is supposed to look like. See me on what a moment. You will find your place to sit. She looked around the place. I'm going to say Elisa because that's who that is she's talking about. Elisa, hold it right there. Olga shouted at Elisa who passed him by. What? What's up with your clothes? Anything wrong with them? Indeed, her attire looks somewhat provocative. Get your uniform nice and neat right now. All right, all right. At least I got her shirt right and walked past, shooting an unpleasant glare at me. So where can we find a place to sit? There wasn't a lot of free seats. Go over there next to you, Lana. Hmm, maybe I... Yeah, that's fine. The food's already on the table, too. I know the choice but to accept. Of course, there was probably a... Uh... Oh, I, I th oh, my bad. I didn't mean to skip it, guys. Sorry. But it looked so tasty that I had no chance to resist. Hey, what do you want? I replied rather really to Yolanda, who was standing next to me. Why didn't you play football with us? Because of my clothes, said I, pointing at the source of the problem. Oh, all right, then eat. However, there wasn't much left to eat. My cutlet was missing from the plate. Only she could have done it. No more precisely none, but no more precisely none, but Yolanda could have done it. Give me back my cutlet. In a big family, you snooze, you lose. You can. It can cost you a cutlet if you are careless. Give it back, I'm telling you. Okay, what does the guide say? Take it or no? Attempt to take the cutlet. Okay. I looked at her menacingly and was about to reach out my hand. See, I don't have it. And the United plate was empty. It seemed that this little girl was as fast as she still someone's cutlets. Take it easy. War works something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. There is no point in following her. If they wanted to poison me here, they could have done it in a much easier way. Five minutes later, Yolanda returned and handled me that plate with the steaming hot cutlet on it. Here's one for the starving. Thanks. That was all I could say. I was so hungry that my suspicions were gone in a flash. Back to the cut with my fork and... What the? Some bug? No, no, not, not a bug. An insect. He's got legs and it's wiggly. No, it's all the same thing, dude. Play fell through flooring pieces and the chair hit me on a hard... Um, the chair hit me hard on the leg while falling. I've disliked insects since I was a child, but then when those creepy crawlies appeared on my plate, that's just way too much. You little. You know, I seemed ready for such a twist. I was already at the door laughing as if she just heard a fresh stand-up com comedy joke. I dashed after her. We ran out of the canteen. We were just a few dozen meters apart, and I felt, uh, felt I would catch this little girl easily we ran to the square past the club's house and ran into the forest path i started to gasp for breath i should have quit smoking i guess yolanda passed up passed out of sight on the next turn it can't be true that she managed to get away from me it simply can't i stopped and tried to catch my breath night was falling it looks like i'm lost it's a bad idea to stay in the woods at night better get back to the cabin However, I had absolutely no clue which way to go. Well, gotta choose at random. I wandered for quite some time in the forest and even thought of crying for help, but I finally saw the camp's fence beyond the trees. Everything fell back into place. The bus is gone. I mumbled quietly. On one hand, there was nothing strange about that. The bus couldn't just stay there forever. On the other hand, it meant there was someone driving. Because buses do not drive themselves, or do they? This world seemed 
too normal, but every event here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation and a surreal one. Certainly the driver could have just been off for a snack and left, and I left too soon, and that's why. In any case, this is not a place for me. My lips are, my mouth is really dry, but I got nothing to drink. Okay, back to the visual novel. Whether that bus drive itself or not was probably an important question, but it was much more important to know how I got here at all and where this here was. The fields and woods stretching towards the horizon had no answers. There was nothing familiar about them. A strange, odd, and alien world. However, at the same time, I was absolutely not frightening. Either my self-preservation instinct is dedicated to the resign from his job, or all this running around the camp and local pioneers had lulled me so much with their carefree normality that I was simply forgetting what had happened to me just a couple hours ago. Although I probably just had no strength left to worry. All I wanted was some peace, calmness, I just wanted to have a break from it all. And not only after that, I would continue looking for answers and ready and reloaded. However, that would be some time later. And what about now? Can I allow myself to relax? It got completely dark. In any case, it was better to spend the night in the camp. I was about to head back when someone came up silently from behind. Hello, what are you doing here so late? It was Slave yesterday and before me. I was so surprised that I jumped. So you didn't catch Lana, did you? She smiled. I nodded disappointingly and sighed. No wonder. No one ever has. Yeah, she's a real rocket girl. She could have found a better use for her energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. You didn't manage to have dinner after all. I ain't, indeed, I completely forgot about my hunger. But after these words of hers, my stomach drew attention to itself by giving a torturous rumble. Savia smiled. Let's go then. Why, the canteen still open? It's alright, I have the keys. The keys? Yeah, I have the keys to all the facilities in this camp. How come? Well, I'm something like the camp leader's aides here. I see. Well, let's go. It was enough for you can't refuse. That is true. Free food you can never turn down. With you. When we reached the square, Slavia stopped in her tracks. Excuse me, I should warn my roommate that I'll be late. She's so punctual herself that she'll be worried otherwise. You go on to the canteen and I'll come in a minute. Alright. I really did not expect to find somebody aside from myself there at such a late hour. And somebody was apparently trying to hopelessly open the door. Without any secret thoughts, I walked up on the porch. And the locker lock picker turned out to be Elisa. I should have probably kept off and waited. She looked at me intently for a while and then said, Not just stand there, give me a hand or something. Meaning? Help me open the door. Why? Because I want some buns and kefir. Dinner wasn't big enough. Um, is it really a good idea? Aren't you hungry yourself, huh? Yolanda didn't let you have a normal dinner, did she? She smiled sarcastically. It's true, she didn't. It's fine, Slavia will come in that land. What? Guess I shouldn't have said that. I'm off then, and you'll pay for this. You owe me two already. Having said that, Elisa disappeared into the night. And then, well, and what was the first one? Sabi, I didn't keep me waiting for too long. Is everything all right? Yeah, why are you asking? No reason, it's nothing. It would be better if I didn't tell her about Elisa. Everything's fine. I said that and immediately heard a note of dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go? As for Slavia, she seemed not to have noticed anything. Or at least she was pretty she hadn't. We entered the canteen. Wait a bit, I'll go get something. I sat down on the chair and apparently waited for my savior. My dinner was simple. A few buns and a glass of kefir. No wonder I bet Hungry Pine has finished everything off. However, even that was far better than most of my usual diet. Savvy, I sat across the table and looked at me while I was eating. Is there something on my face? No, just, she smiled. So how do you like your first day out in the camp? In the camp? Well, I don't really know. It's silly to ask him when he suddenly found himself in a different reality, whether he liked the food in canteen, the camp leader, or his assigned hut. It's all right. You'll get used to it. Savia started to look at the window dreamily. Frankly speaking, I have no desire to get used to such things, but as for her, she doesn't know. Or at least she wants me to think that she doesn't. But all in all, it's nice here. I had to somehow break the awkward silence. You think so? She asked without any interest. Yeah, I suppose it's so. I wanted to say retro, but I managed to hold that back. After all, it was retro for me, but what about them? It might be the only kind of life they knew. And the term life was applicable here at all. So how? 
She watched it closely as if something important decided depending on la la la. She watched you closely as if something important is depending on my answer. Well, I don't know. Lovely, yeah, it's lovely here. I guess you're right. She smiled again. It's very good that you think so. Why? Well, everybody here likes it here. And what about you? Me? Yes. I love it here. It's great. Then you don't need to worry about what other people think. Well, I don't really worry. Slavia laughed. This conversation seems to be leading me far astray from where I wanted to get to. And you're worried yourself. Really? Why do you say so? Well, then someone is chewing so intensely. I'm sorry. It's okay. I couldn't bring myself to be more cautious around this girl. But why her in particular? Why not any other locum having it? And every one of them looked completely normal to me. Precisely normal. So normal it sends chills down my spine into my marrow. Normally, no, normal like a neighbor with a power jaw in one hand and a subwoofer in the other. Not like a passenger you can meet in the subway or in a public transportation. Not like a co-worker at the next table in an open plan office. And not even like a friendly friend who differs from other humans in his constant insistence. All of them look normal and as I was expecting them to be with their own downsides but without any superpowers. Safi was also cute. I glanced at her stealthily not knowing what to say. I'm sorry I wanted to show you the camp but was ran off my feet. I didn't miss anything while on my own I guess. Are you sure you haven't missed out on anything at all? She smiled so brightly that I had to drop my eyes in confusion. Well somehow uh, uh, so, uh, well, how would I know? It's my first day here. Okay, well, and what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, the campaign, the football field, and what about the beach? Just from afar. You really should go there, or let's do it together. Yeah, okay, we will. Her naturalness started to scare me, but then I thought, what if, what if everything that happens here is how it's supposed to be, and this world looks strange only to me, while well, for them it is normal? Maybe I was thrown into the past. Yeah, that would explain a lot. Can I ask a stupid question? No. Stabby so smiled and stood up from the table. It's like, can you find a way to Olga's by yourself? Of course I can, but why should I go there? She'll settle you with someone. What for? Well, probably this question seems stupid because Stabby so burst into good-natured laughter. You need to sleep somewhere, right? That makes sense. Fine, I'll be off then. Good night. Night. It's strange that she left in such a hurry. But no keys left in the door. Log caught my attention. I was going to catch up to the slave but where does she live? And knocking on every door in the middle of the night this doesn't look like a bright idea. Okay, take the keys or no. Leave the keys. Leave the keys. Okay. On the other hand, why would I need them? The night, though dark, was silent. Was it silent at all? No one could hear chirping tr crickets, the sounds of the night. Bird and rustling trees from everywhere. A sudden desire to follow Slavia's advice and go to the camp leader's cabin appeared. I don't know why, but the sight of an unknown bronze builder of the coming years and put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the beach and started to recall everything that happened today. That was my constructive mood could offer. Here was much better than their canteen and tardy pioneers were running by, so this place didn't seem scary at all. But summer camp girls? I was so tired from everything and knew it was strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. I heard a barely noticeable rustle nearby. I shivered and looked in that direction. A girl reading a book. Lena. I decided to move closer and talk. She was the only person I had met here without exchanging even a few words. Hi, what are you reading? Lena was so surprised that she even jumped. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. Never mind. She flashed and stared at the book again. So what are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone with the Wind. Okay, that one thing said to keep silent, so we're going to keep silent. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it, but I think such literature suits her very well. Then he didn't seem to be interested in continuing the conversation. Well, if I'm bothering you. No, she answered while looking at the book. And I sit beside you for a while. Why? Really, why? Maybe just because I was very tired from having company is better than being alone. And maybe I wanted to try to find something out from her. I carefully examined Lena, but no, I doubt that. Well, I don't know. I'm not allowed to. Feel free. But if I'm bothering you, no, you're not. I can leave. Just say. Everything's all right. Okay, then. I set the end of the bench carefully. I thought such an intense talk staying here was the last thing I wanted. But it wouldn't be. It would be. Ah! But it wouldn't be nice to just stand up and leave. That didn't really go well, huh? Lena hasn't answered to anything. It seems I made a fool out of myself. I bet if Yolanda was here, she'd give a good laugh at me. 
Do you enjoy being here? I recall Slava's question. Thought it would be a good conversation, good start for conversation. Yes. She smiled slightly. I guess I like it too. Lena definitely wasn't very sociable and probably couldn't ha- carry on a meaningless conversation as easily as Slavia. But there was something about her, her that attracted attention, like a momentary glimpse of a reflection in the glass on a rainy autumn evening. It was when she turned around and stared into the dark and searching for something that you saw out of the corner of your eye. Of course, you weren't able to distinguish or understand what it felt so tempting. Leanne was still reading the book, but without paying any attention to my presence. I had no intention of asking her anything about this camp or this world in general. Beautiful night, yes. How in the world would you start a conversation with her? (laughs) It's late, I have to go. Yes, it's quite late. Good night. Night. There was something strange about this girl. At first glance, she was a typical, shy, and modest pioneer girl, but... The mystery of Lena took its own place, and in the massive list of mysteries about this camp, which I had started but together in my head. A lazy evening, there's nothing like a, a lazy evening, there's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. I headed towards Holko's cabin. The light in the house was on. Hello, Simeon. You're quite light. Yeah. I went for a walk to look around the camp. Alright. He'll be sleeping here. She pointed to the finger at one of the beds. Right here? I was able. I was a bit surprised. Yeah, is something wrong? We are f- out of free cabins anyway. I can't lead a smile, but I'd rather think it was just out of politeness. You do want to be a decent pioneer, don't you? And there was a clear emphasis on the word decent. Yep, sure. I was lost in thought for a moment. But you don't mind it, mademoiselle. She looked at me oddly, with surprise and some offense in her eyes. A pioneer should show respect for their elders, Olga said strictly. Of course he should. No one argues with that. I blathered, not realizing what was wrong. Shouldn't you also? She stared at me. Under such a gaze, even a mithril forged by the best dwarf masters from the deepest dungeons would melt. Should I what? What's up, toots? And no answer and lack of mis- un- lack of understanding made me raise my voice. You must address adults properly. <laughs> She's mad, but she has some big boobs, though. Just saying. Yes, of course. There are a lot of strange things here. But this girl is just a couple years older than me. Or maybe younger. Even younger. But I decided not to argue. While well, just a few minutes ago, I would never have even called her... I would never have called her an adult. I have to admit that she was also given a strong character. In any case, I wouldn't... I wasn't in a position to argue. As you say, ma'am. I mumbled. That's much better. That... It's how these pioneers should conduct himself, and now it's time to sleep. Honestly speaking, I was going to become neither a decent nor an indecent pioneer. Just yesterday, I wasn't going to become a pioneer at all. But do I have a choice now? If you don't, we want. If you don't want to, we will have to make you. This model, Olga said, uh, Olga was probably going to use. I climbed in bed and closed my eyes and only realized how tired I was the day after, but something hammered in my head awfully as my brains had stirred in night shift, and they seemed to be aimed at more rolling steel than working off the more sensitive. The buzz flew through my mind. I don't think I read that right, but whatever. And the square with the momentum. Monument. Monument. The canteen full of pioneers and the malicious face of Ilana. Slavia. Lena. At least, oh, and even calling the least, I didn't give me too much of a negative feeling. What if I'm here for good? Oh, that would be terrible, buddy. Day two. Okay, guys. Well, this is the end of day one. We're going to day two. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll be making a video within the next couple days to show off day two. But I'm going to save here, guys. So thanks for watching.